It broke four records over the last decade in pursuit of the American dream of home ownership. First, we had the highest rate of home ownership ever recorded, 69% in 2004. Second, we had the highest concentration of wealth in home ownership since at least 1952 when we started keeping records, about a third. Um, we had the highest personal to debt, I'm sorry, personal debt to income ratio since 1952. Again, when we started keeping data, it was about 132% debt to income. And we had the lowest personal savings rate since 1934, 1.5% in 2005. You know, these, the, the convergence of these four records, these four balance sheet failures, um, you know, the fall, led to the worst uh, economic downturn since the Great Depression, and it harmed the stability and mobility of millions of families and future generations. This was all on this belief that asset values will keep rising, we don't have to save, we can run up our debts, you know, and it led to the crash. And what's interesting is that many folks, including folks at the Fed, um, thought that, you know, what happens in the household sector will work itself out on its own. Markets are basically efficient. And so nobody thought that the balance sheets of low and moderate and middle income Americans could bring the economy down, but they did. That's what happened. And so I think, I think you know, leverage was really the core, core failure of all the failures that we had. But leverage was the price that we paid for the American dream, and we are still paying for that. We are still deleveraging, as uh, economists like to call it. And I think, I think because of that, our framework, um, as Tina and everybody around here knows, can no longer be just helping people save and build wealth. We have to look at the entire balance sheet. 